Hey guys, Mary here from Mary's Heirloom Seeds. Uh, welcome to another fun video. Uh, today is something a little different than normal. I'm going to share with you how to make your own fermented pepper sauce. All right, to get started, you need some simple ingredients and simple tools. Uh, probably the most important part when you are dealing with spicy peppers, which we are, is going to be gloves. I keep uh, these gloves handy at all times here on our homestead. You never know when they might come in handy. Um, but specifically when you're handling hot peppers, you really want to make sure that you use uh, gloves because this spiciness will seep into your hands on your fingers. Um, you don't want to touch your face. You want to make sure that your hands uh, stay clear of your face and anything else. I can't tell you um, how many times I have had customers tell me that they have touched their face or their hands are burning, even just after chopping up um, some of these jalapenos, which are not a, the hottest pepper we're going to talk about today. So I've got three varieties of peppers here. Uh, I already mentioned jalapenos. Uh, next on my list are freshly harvested yellow scotch bonnets. I love these peppers. Um, and next I have uh, oh. <laughs> orange habanero. Um, everything has been washed before we get started. I won't be able to use that now that I've dropped it on the ground. Um, but these orange habaneros will make a really nice pepper sauce. All right, next on my list of important things that we need to make our own fermented sauce are glass jars. Uh, I'm specifically using wide mouth ball jars or mason jars. Uh, because I have a nifty, fancy little lid. Now, you don't need this lid, but Doc bought these for me for my birthday last month, and I am so excited. I've already made my first batch of fermented peppers, and it was so easy. Um, so this is called a fermenting lid. Uh, you can purchase them in a lot of places that you can get canning, um, canning supplies. Um, and then I have my glass with my salt water solution, and we'll get to that in just a minute. All right, so let's get to the meat and potatoes of fermenting peppers. Uh, so my recipe is very simple. I found it on a Pepper Madness website. Super easy to use. Uh, now this is one and a quarter teaspoons of salt. Um, don't use iodized salt. You want to use like a sea salt. Um, it's super easy, but the iodized salt from what I've read uh, doesn't let it ferment as well. Um, so I just have uh, coarse sea salt. Um, so this is a double recipe. I'm using two cups of water. So you're going to use one and one quarter teaspoon of salt per one cup of water. So two cups of water, two and a half teaspoons of salt. Um, and now what we're going to do is you're going to lightly chop your peppers, whichever you choose to use. Uh, they don't need to be uh, finely diced. Uh, it just needs to be uh, a thinly chopped or even just coarse chopped, as they call it. Uh, if you haven't noticed, I really like simple recipes. So most of the recipes I share here at Mary's Heirloom Seeds are easy. Uh, simple ingredients. This is literally three ingredients. You have peppers, salt, and water. I don't think it gets much easier than that unless I was just eating the peppers by themselves. Um, so I'm going to set this aside here. And so these scotch bonnets, I'm definitely going to be saving the seeds for those. Uh, so I'm going to set those aside and I'm not going to use them quite yet. Um, but these orange habaneros, I'm going to save the seeds from all of these. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do one at a time. That way I don't get my seeds mixed up. Um, but these yellow scotch bonnets, I don't have very many of. So I definitely want to save those for a special occasion like that pepper sauce I'm going to make is going to be amazing. So if you see, I'm just slicing easy stuff. doesn't have to be anything fancy. You can put the seeds in there if you want. You don't have to. And here I go. I just dropped some on the table. Now something to consider. You don't want any bad bacteria in your ferment. So you want to make sure that uh, your surface area is very clean. I know I'm outside today, but it's such an amazing day. And I already cleaned off this area really well. Um, that way I didn't have to worry about it. Okay, so now that I have rough chopped 
my orange habaneros here. Now we're going to use our solution. So I'm just going to make sure that I cover those peppers just enough. I don't need to use the entire jar full. I just need enough to cover. So we take our peppers and our solution. And there you go. Here is our first jar. Now I'm gonna screw this lid on tight. And the really cool thing about these lids is they've got a little timer on the top. Um, it doesn't move, um, but it goes one to 31 so you can figure out how many days that you want to do this. Now, you can ferment peppers for days, weeks. Uh, some people have even said that they have done it for months. The most I've fermented peppers so far has been two weeks. So I'm gonna make sure that I check on this every now and then. Um, the pepper sauce might get a little bit um, cloudy, but that's okay. As long as there's no mold or mildew on it, you're good to go. I hope you enjoyed a fun and easy tutorial on how to make your own fermented peppers. I'm Mary at Mary's Heirloom Seeds, and in the description section of this video, I have shared the recipe that I used uh, to make these fermented peppers. There are so many available online that you can pick and choose which you would prefer. Uh, and just to recap, we use some homegrown peppers that we had in our own garden. We use a salt and water solution. I made sure I wore my gloves when I was handling those hot peppers. And all the peppers I mentioned today in the video, which were jalapenos, uh, orange habanero, and yellow scotch bonnets, those can all be found on our website. I've linked in the description section below uh, the link to our pepper page. We've got all sorts of seeds available here at Mary's Heirloom Seeds. If you've enjoyed this video, please hit that like and subscribe button if you haven't already. Uh, and if you've got any questions, you can always comment below or send an email to mary at marysheirloomseeds.com. Thanks for joining me for another fun video and happy planting.